I thought that's what she was going to do. Yeah, I know. I, I, you know, I thought, oh, I better get going and just start this, right? Let me get back over to embroidery mode. Okay. When you're in embroidery mode, if I have a design on the screen, it will show up over in, you know, the art mode, right, in the Corel Draw mode. However, it's not going to be something that you can edit or you can access there, okay? When you change over to the Corel Draw portion, you really are just changing over to a Corel Draw program with the ability to create a vector image. Then you can convert that image into an embroidery design. You cannot, however, take embroidery and convert it, you know, into an image at this point to put in Corel Draw. Does that make sense? They don't go back and forth. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and we'll start off, and I'll show you what I mean by. Um, let's just open up. Uh, these are all Jan Jeff files. Uh, we'll go ahead and open up the Jeff file. Hmm. Maybe we won't. Let's open this one. Yeah, it's like, huh, it just doesn't want to do that. So, okay, let's go in here and let me get over to our file folder. Okay, we want to go to, thinking, why am I not seeing anything? Because I'm in the wrong one. Here we go. Okay, let's look for our Jan files. Okay, I've been playing kind of with crazy quilt things, right? So I'm going to go ahead and open this one up. And, you know, I've just been turning these into, um, you know, motifs, right? Let me zoom out here because we're really zoomed in quite a bit. So there's my, my little motif. Now, if I had punched this in the program, I would have to do, you know, each little line and then do that, you know, reverse back line, right? And it would have taken me longer. I could do it. You know, I could get this done without a problem. It would just take me longer than taking something that's pretty simple when you really come down to it and using the embroidery. Um, or graphics portion of this. So I'm going to click on the pencil to go over to graphics mode. Okay, now, this is the embroidery that was in that, you know, file that we had open. You can see I, I can't really do anything with it. I can't select it. It's just kind of hanging out here, right? So, you know, that's what I wanted to show you. It, it really is just hanging out. I can turn off the image by, you know, clicking on this icon, which is show stitches. And that basically is just showing me what's in the, the program already. If I click on this icon, I switch back to the embroidery mode, okay? So I want to go ahead and I'm just going to, um, well, we'll just make a new file. So I'm making a new file. There's nothing there. And I'm going to create a motif in um, the Corel Draw or graphics portion of the program because it does something really nifty with my lines, okay? It's, it really is somewhat of a time saver and it's not that hard to do. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to graphics mode. And you can put a grid on as well. You know, you're going to go up and, you know, look at your view. And there's my grid lines, you know, show my grids right here. You know, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on my grid. Okay, if you look at the icons here, you know, imports is, you know, you have your hotkeys as well, but that's going to import an image. You know, touch up, that's going to let you kind of edit things a little bit, and export. So I can export an image as well. So for right now, you know, I want to go ahead and um, open up an image. And, you know, we worked on this one last time, right? So uh, this time, let me scroll down. We'll find something different to play with. We didn't so much work on this one, so I'm going to go ahead and open this one up. Okay, now, this is just, you know, a scanned image, right? I'm not going to really be able to convert this. It's not a good enough image to convert automatically to a uh, vector image. I'm going to have to draw with this. But this is like the embroidery portion. You know, when I'm drawing, I can just create basically the one piece and then, you know, copy and paste and mirror it. So here are my tools over here. They're very similar to your embroidery portion. This is select. You know, that's going to be your zoom. This is going to let me reshape anything that I draw here. You know, like with nodes, it's very, very similar to digitizing. 
And this is my freehand draw. These are, you know, going to let me draw shapes. And we'll play with this a little more as we go along. Right now for today, we can even do vector lettering and erase things and stuff like that. But right now we're going to concentrate on just freehand drawing. So if I select freehand drawing, hold on, let me go back and find my image because I know it's still there. Okay, maybe not. So let's go ahead and import our image again. And, you know, what it's asking me is, you know, do I want to drag it? What I didn't do was set the image, okay? See what it says right here? Big motif, you know, do you want to drag to resize it? Press enter to center it on the page. Press the uh, space bar to use original position. I'm just going to press enter and put it onto the page. And you'll know that it's on the page when you see, you know, the little nodes around it showing that you can select it. Now I can go and I can use the freehand draw. And without my image disappearing, and I can still use my scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out, okay? Now with this, we are literally drawing lines. So I'm just going to start from, you know, like if I look at this, it's all the way across, but I want to use the copy and paste option. So I'm really going to just kind of start in the center and draw my line out. Okay, and there's just a straight line, right? Now, if I continue and I, you know, want to go ahead and draw some more, I'm just going to, you know, place that node. And if I want to curve, you know, I'm not necessarily going to get that curve right away, right? But see what it's doing? It's just making those little lines, right? Yes. Okay. This tool, this is freehand draw. You know, this is a little bit different. And these are just lines, okay? So, but with these lines, when I press and hold my mouse button, see what's going on? I can get a curve. Okay. Let me kind of delete these. See, I can just select these and delete them. So when you're looking at your input tools here, this one seems like it's the one to use, you know, because you can freehand draw. And you can't. If you're really good, you could just freehand draw and trace all over. But if you're using it because you want to draw like a straight line from, you know, here to here, it'll give you a straight line. What it won't give you is a curve just by, you know, let me undo that, a curve just by clicking and dragging you would literally have to freehand draw this around, okay? See? So you have to have very good hand control. So that's the first tool. Okay, now let's expand this out. This tool, oops, sorry, this tool right here is kind of cool too. It's a freehand or, you know, um, I shouldn't say it's really a freehand drawing tool, but it is. I mean, you are literally freehand. You cannot just make points and click and make things. It doesn't work. It has to, you know, kind of be scrolling, okay? But you can see just based on what this is, it, you know, it's more of a, you know, kind of a fill type of line, if that makes sense. It's not going to give you something very narrow. And do these. And this tool, even though it looks like it's just going to be nothing but lines, is your best option. We're going to play with that one. This one, when you click on things, you, know, you can draw it or you can, well, you kind of have to drag it. But it's going to straighten. That's what this is trying to represent. See how I'm dragging these lines and I'm real kind of rigid and edgy? It's going to straighten that line. See what it's doing? So that's what this is trying to show you. It's going to curve. If it thinks you're curving, it's going to straighten. If you think you're, it, you know, if it thinks you're going straight. Does that make sense? Okay, let me get rid of the rest of these things. Okay, so, you know, if you get comfortable enough with this tool, you actually could use it. You could say, okay, straight line. Oops, sorry. Let me click on the tool. Straight line. 
you know, let's come up and let's draw a little oval around it. And, you know, depending on, it is smoothing your lines, but, you know, you still have to be a little bit more accurate, right? So the tool you're probably going to use, at least to start with, is going to be the line tool. The line tool is kind of interesting. I'm going to start here, place my click. It automatically just keeps drawing a line. So there's my straight portion. You know, I even though it made that line, it's still isn't done. It's going to connect this for me as soon as I click. And I can come up to here and press and hold the mouse button. See that curve starting? Mm -hmm. And if I'm not quite right, you know, if I'm not following the line all that well, I'm not going to get all panic stricken because let me undo. I'm not going to panic because I can come in and edit. Okay, now the one problem with this is that you see as soon as I click on this node, it straightens that line out. See what's going on? So I have to be careful. I'm going to have to kind of click off to the side here and press enter to end. And, you know, there's a little bit of an opening, but no problem. We can edit. Like even though, you know, I'm kind of all over the place here, right? Let me change line lines. You can see it. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. Okay, see where my line is? Even though I drew it very crooked around here, I'm not going to panic. You know, I just select the line, go over to reshape, and, you know, I can just grab each one of these nodes. And I've got these little handles that I can curve or I can squish back towards the node to control how much curving is going on. Okay. See, if I pull it out, it gives me a little more curve there. You can pull that one in. And to get rid of that little bend, I can actually pull that whole thing there and come in and grab this one and bend it over to the line where I want it to meet. Okay. I would try to be a little bit neater, but, you know, as you're drawing it. But... I did want you to see here's what you've got. You've got these little handles, and these little handles can curve, but they also they also can control the curve by the length of the arrows. Okay? So it's not just the direction of the arrow. It's also the length that's going to control how much curve goes into something. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, you know, I've got something that's, you know, kind of done. Here's, you know, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to see if I can change the color of it. It says it's changing, but it really isn't. So, I guess we'll kind of leave it as is right now. I think I have to come down here. There we go. Let's change that to red. Okay. So there is, you know, our first little thing. You know, I would make this a little more pointy, you know, if you want. But I want you to see what those, you know, curves do. Okay, now that our line should be red, let's make sure it stays red so you can see. So once you practice with this tool, you'll get more comfortable. But, you know, really it's one left click. Come up to where you want to be. As you come around, just a very gentle hold of the mouse, and you can see the curve. See where the curve's forming as I, I click, right? See how that curve starts forming? So you know exactly how long to hold that mouse and how long to drag. And again, I can't click right next to there, so I can click here. And if you make a mistake, just undo. You don't lose your tool. I can click here, press Enter, and then come back to edit this and drag that over there. And then, you know, of course, tweak anything that you need to tweak. I could even see where this has that little, you know, faux stitch there to, you know, kind of make it look like it's, you know, if you hand stitched it, right? I could. I could come in here and I could say, you know what, let's put that little 
post stitch in there too. And if I thought it was too long, I could just come in here and edit. Okay, so I've gotten that one piece, and it's going to be a very, very similar thing. You know, I, I've gotten that one piece. I'm going to select this. I'm just going to undo a few moves up on accident. Come over here and select this piece. But be careful because this piece right here and this piece are two separate things. Now, I can use these tools up here to cut out things or merge them together into one piece. Okay, see what happened? If I use this tool, it's a merge tool. This would cut out like a shape, like um, if I had a square over top of a circle, it would cut out the overlap for me. Okay, but this merges things together. So now I have like one piece. So it is a one piece line. I don't have to worry about selecting two things. I have one piece. And, you know, I, of course, you know, if you have the one piece, you just simply take it. Copy and paste it, right? Copy, paste, and here's my center. Move it up here. Left click a second time and it behaves just like the digitizing program does and rotate that down into place. You know, move that into position and hold on. You know what? I forgot to. I forgot to merge these together when I selected them. I showed you guys the merge thing and then undid it. Hold on. I was wondering why that didn't go where I wanted it to go. Okay, it's merged. Copy, paste, drag it up, put that point right there, left click a second time, drag that over, rotate it into place. We're not going to really worry too much about, you know, that little extra line right this minute. And, you know, just get those into position first, right? And you can use the arrows on your keyboard for, like, fine-tune things. And the same thing, copy, paste. So, you know, it's a little quicker because, A, I can quickly do this. I still have to go through the same copy and paste kind of thing, right? But I want to show you what happens. I'm going to go clean this section up real quick. You know, let's put these joining here, and let me clean this one up, too. Okay, so you can zoom in with your scroll and just kind of make these all overlap, right? Okay, now I've got all three of those selected. And I'm just going to merge it. So it's just one piece, right? So right now I've got one piece. And if we digitize this, we would have to go up, around. We'd have to, you know, stop here, make that, come back, make that, come back down. And, you know, we'd have to really think this through, right? Ooh, you guys are way too quiet. Did I lose you? No. Okay, is this making sense about, you know, how hard this would be to digitize it? Yes. Okay, now, I am just going to use this one little piece to demonstrate this. Okay, so this is just one little piece. It's all one piece because I use that little merge tool, right? And I'm going to say, you know what? Convert this to embroidery. If I just go back here then, you know, I haven't converted it to embroidery. So let's convert this to embroidery. Okay, now, when I look at the resequence thing, you know, this is, you know, I get this little funny icon like it's grouped, and it may very well be. Go up here and see if it'll let you ungroup it. If not, then this little icon, which generally signifies something grouped, means that this has been created differently than what you can do in the program. And it is. If you look at this piece, here's my, you know, my end point, here's my out point. I can move this out point and it literally will move. Okay, remember my out point was up here, right? I'm going to move it to here.
Let's move this over. Okay, now, if I move the out points, these should basically have nothing in between them, right? Okay, so here's my in point. That's my in point jumping to the first thing. Here's my second piece. Whoops. I move it over. See where that's my out point has moved, right? See the jump to the next in point? You guys see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now what that means is this. I don't, if I can use that vector program to draw something using an image like this for a motif, right? Or for any complicated outline that I might want to create for an image, right? I don't have to worry about not being able to change my in and out points anymore or if I'm going to have a jump or did I do this right? I don't have to worry about that, right? Um, I can still change all of my stitch properties. I just select it. I can change anything. I can say I want it to be three here. I could go, you know, let's make this a stem stitch line. See? You know, let's make this um, a back stitch line. So I still have, you know, all of the options here, even though I can now change my in and out points. I can even resize this. Okay, so uh, is your head turning about how wonderful this is going to be to make motifs? Absolutely. <laughs> now, learning the editing program, okay, isn't any harder or easier really, maybe easier than learning the digitizing program on some level, especially for lines, because the import, I did a few of these images. I'm going to see if I can find them real quick. There we go. That might be it. Okay, here's here's just an image, right? There's my image. So, and I made these images, you know, in this program, right? Anything that's the WMF I exported out. See, there's, um, you know, there is, let me get rid of this. There's the flowers. And obviously I had that other design in my window. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my stitches. Hmm. I guess it won't let me do it once I did it. But this is the image I drew of these flowers, right? Now, if I go back to embroidery mode, there's my design that was in there, right? When I opened up and I had that embroidery design by accident kind of left there, and it was showing on the screen, but I couldn't really do anything with it. There it is. You know, it'll convert. If, if it says stitches are in there, it's going to take that and turn it into stitches. It literally is a design. Let me get rid of that. But see now that it's gone because I deleted it from the embroidery portion because it was stitches, right? Are, the, does that make sense? Is that making sense to you guys? Okay. So if you have embroidery in there and you come back and you make it an image like I did here, right? This literally is my image that of those, you know, little flowers that you saw, right? And you can see, you know, I've drawn, let me kind of zoom in. You know, I've drawn like each little individual line. I exported this as a WMF, so, you know, it's one piece now. And to do that, when you draw something, you just literally go out to export. And you have vector options here, WMS, Illustrator, um, Corel Photo Paint. You probably have a CD something, which would be DMX with Corel, CDP, okay? But I can now export my images that I draw and save them, you know, whip them out to WMS images, um, and save them for something else, or 
I can open them into the program and let the program try to deal with them. Or I can just save my time. I would still export your image or save your image, but as soon as I say, you know what, see how complicated that image is? Convert it to embroidery for me. Yeah, you know what? Hold on, let me go back. I just said change to it, so here you go. Convert to embroidery. And ta-da, this is now a design. You know, it's going to be a single running stitch. Um, you know, let's make it, oh, let's make it a triple stitch length of three. Okay, I can resize it. And if you look, it's all one piece. If I look at my in and out points, you know, there's my in point. Oh, I want that in point down here. I want that out point down here. And I can do that. It'll still work. You know, it'll still allow me to do that even though it's, you know, a triple running line. I can still do that. It, and that's what the beauty of this is, is that it does all of my thinking for me. Right? Because if I had to punch this, if I punch this without using this little vector thing, I would be doing, you know, okay, straight line. Okay, let's go. Bing, bing. This would not be hard, right? I could do this pretty quick, right? That part wouldn't be too too stressful. But then I'd end up, you know, going, okay, let's make sure we select that. Oh, yeah, let's backtrack. And then i got to figure out how to get up to here. Even if I stayed there, I'd still have to figure out how to get up to here. So then I would be doing, you know, another little line up to here, right? You select that. I would be saying, okay, let's go from here to here. Oh, yeah, let's go here and jump over and, okay, back. Let's enter. Okay, now let's make this line and select it. Oh, yeah, backtrack to get back to that center. Okay, do you see how much more complicated that would be? Yes, but where, could, could you show us the, the um, just the stitches to where the jumps might be with the, what the machine did, what the program did? With what the program did? Because I can move my in and out points, right? Let me turn off my hoop real quick. Okay, because I can turn off my in and out point, or I can move my in and out point, right? Here's my in point, here's my out point. There are um, no jumps in this. No jumps at all. So if I turn off my visualizer, this jump that you see from here to here is from the center to the first stitch, and it's in every single design. It doesn't actually stitch on your machine, right? But there are no jumps in this, and that's what's really the beauty of using that, um, you know, using the art program to draw a simple thing. Okay? I'm speechless. Yeah, I mean, it, it just is, you know, now you have to learn to use the tools in the art program. But compared to, you know, the design that we worked on last week of the motif that was a crazy quilt motif, right? You put a lot of work into packing that to get no jumps or to get it to go where it was supposed to go or touch where it was supposed to touch it without jumps, right? Two days. Yeah, this one's bam, you're done. You might spend some time drawing it, but it's less time than if you digitized it. And the reason is because drawing it, oh, we're getting real bad reverb. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you for a second, okay, Susan? Okay, yes. there we go. Okay. Okay. So drawing that particular design is much easier than you know, even if I pull like the design in, I could trace over this. It's gonna be much, you know, easier than trying to path it because it doesn't matter if you put the lines in the wrong place. You know, you're gonna be able to Join them. You know, this is pretty quick and easy, right? Bing, bing. You just keep clicking, right? right. 
And, you know, you get to here, okay, we end. Then you can come down here and start, right? It doesn't matter where my inner out points are. It makes no difference. I don't have to draw an extra line to go from here to here. I just don't. Right? There's my lines. I mean, they are what they are. And then I have the option of merging them. So I don't ever have to draw. You know, I don't have to worry about, um, like, I might have to start from here to here to make a line sometimes. If you noted, that stem line didn't show up the last time. So I have to do it a little bit different. Big deal. Right? But that certainly is going to make making all these little flowers a lot easier. I'm just going to bing, 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 right? Zoom in and take your tool, and it doesn't matter what direction you draw them in. You know, just hit enter, make your lines. You can make them touch. If you don't want them to touch, just, um, you know, backspace or undo. Oh, sorry, my mouse gets funny sometimes when we're videoing. You know, it's just a matter of, you know, bing, bing, make them all the same length, copy and paste if you want, rotate, but it's just really almost as fast, you know, to do it this way, right? And once you have one of them done, you know, you're just going to take these pieces. Okay, see all those little pieces I did? Let me hide the embroidery here. See all the little flower pieces? I'm just going to come down here and select them. Um, you know, copy, paste, drag them. Let me get the Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't have an extra copy. Copy, paste. Make sure you have select on. You know, you're going to drag them over to the next flower, right? You know, I would, of course, made my stem. Okay, now. I'm not going to draw the whole thing because that would just take a long time. So let me kind of drag this over back to the center of the screen. Well, we might as well just merge those babies all together. So now there's just one piece, right? And let's convert that to embroidery. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of the first one. Here's the second one. Let's zoom in. And I've got a little bit of a jump here because, you know, I didn't complete this, right? But yeah, you know, let's look at where my in and out points are. Out point, uh, we might as well move our out point down there. And I can do that. I can move these in points around. And I can move the out points around. And it doesn't make a jump. It just adjusts the stitches for me. So that's why that's such a, a nifty little tool. And, you know, this is a relatively simple design to work on. Like some of these images are very simple to work on, right? So I'm going to, you know, send you some images and let you play with this. And then next time we're going to start working with vector artwork. Um, I shouldn't say vector artwork. We're going to start working with artwork and looking at how we can use our manual punch tools for some things and why that image program might be good for other things. Okay, Susan, you still there? Yes, I am. Okay. So... I'll send you some of these, these images to play with because you can turn them into motifs. You can turn them into, um, you know, uh, whatever you want, actually, gallery items, I mean, and, you know, or you can just play with the drawing and see what happens because it doesn't have to just be, um, you know, you're drawing lines. Okay, you have options here. Like when I click on this tool, this is going to give me, you know, like here's a spiral tool, right? You know, I've got all these little nodes so I can play with these and I can adjust these. Let me get rid of that one real quick. You know, I can use the editing tools and I can adjust this. I can, you know, make this odd. That's just with standard tools right here. You know, here's a star. 
How many sides do I want the star to be? Four, three, eight. You know, how big do I want the, you know, or how sharp do I want this? You know, how deep, I guess, do I really want that? And, you know, those are just some basic things, right? This is kind of warping. That's your text. But, um, you know, so I can play with those. And these are just going to be some basic shapes right here. Okay. These are a whole different ballgame. Like, if I click on this one, you know, what do I really want to make? Do I want to make, you know, a smiley face? Do I want to make a no sign? Do I want to, you know, this one's kind of interesting. What happens when I do this? And, oh, what in the world does this no do? You know, so you have a lot of options, and we're going to play with this a little bit. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's, it's not realistic. Sometimes I don't need to clean up an image so drastically or remake the image. But, you know what, sometimes you do. You know, or sometimes it's just easier to create it and whip that over into the program because um, what you'll see, like, on these things here, right, I can tell it that I want it to have an outline. I want that outline to be navy. And there's my navy outline. Okay, see how it started? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then when I say, you know, let's just go convert this to embroidery, it converted this piece. Let me zoom in here. It converted that piece, outline and all. It converted the piece I had selected, right? So if I come over here this time and I select this piece, say, you know, convert that, there you go. You know, there's the other piece. So, you know, you have to kind of learn how to play with this. Um, you know, and what's going to happen. And I have a, a lot of control just by what I select. Okay, this is the last piece. And I'm going to go ahead and, like, copy and paste this so we have a, a couple of them. Okay, if I want, like, all of these pieces, right, I want all of those pieces, then, you know, I really should look at, you know, what can I do to make sure that they all get taken care of? Like, you know, is selecting all of them going to do it? You know, get comfortable with this program. To find out, you know, you're really going to have to select them. You can see that if whatever is selected is what gets created. Okay. So, you guys have any questions on this? No. Okay, I'm going to send you a couple more of those. Um, if they might end up being the same, but I'm going to send you some of the little crazy quilt images. But you know, you're free to go find something too. Like if you find an interesting flower, or a picture of a flower, or a photo of a flower that you would like to, you know, kind of trace. You can bring those into the graphics program and trace those. And why that's neat is this. You know, you know when we go to image and we insert an image, um, yeah, it depends on the image. Like this image right here, you know, I inserted it. Even if I clean this up or resize it down, you know, if I go to do something automatic, first off, it's going to see those lines as too big, right? So even if I process that image using you know, the image preparation and the line preparation, right? Outline image preparation. Even if I do that, you know, that's going to be a pretty heavy duty line for the program to see, right? And, you know, if I come over here, I can do the click to stitch and I can say, oh, you know, let's go ahead and let's click on that outline. Well, you know, that looks pretty heavy duty on the outline because Going to kind of get out of 3D view, I think. A stitch view into 3D view. Let's get rid of our image. Because that line is so thick, see what happened? It doubles it, right? You know, I could play around with it. I could say, okay, oh, well, you know, that's not exactly what I wanted. Let's go back and, you know, let's do this center tool. And, okay, let's. Uh, I'm going to have to undo it and do a one-on-one. Let me 
select that. Okay, let's do, you know, instead of that, let's do the center tool. Let's select this black, and do the center tool. Okay, but when I do that, I don't get clean lines. See? But if I took this image into, you know, the graphics program, I, you know, I could manually punch. But honestly, I probably, I might manually punch this one. I have to be careful because I'd have to go backwards, you know, at the right place. But, you know, if I turn this into a graphic and just traced it in a graphic, which is the same amount of work as manually punching this thing, right, maybe less work, and threw it into this program, a couple of things have happened. I don't have to think about in and out point. I don't have to connect these lines. They do it in the graphic, and then the program routes it for me. So it's just this phenomenal automatic portion to this program. So do you guys want to try? You feel brave enough to try that image? Yes. Okay. I'll send you the, the kitty cat image. You can tell me, you know, if you want to turn this into a graphic. And now bear in mind, with this image, you are going to have a jump. You're going to have a jump here because the eye. And I think that's about the only one you could get away with. You could get away with converting this one pretty close. You might have two facial features that jump, right? Shirley, how about you? You feel up to this? Oh, sure. <laughs> okay. I'm going to send you this image, and, um, and I'll send you a couple crazy quilt images. Because they're just good practice. They're good practice to learn to curve. Okay? Because you're going to have to practice that tool. It does behave differently than the digitizing. Like, if I wanted to curve with the digitizing, right, I would just right-click. With the tool, I have to kind of click and drag to get that curve to be made. Okay? In the graphics program. So, all right, ladies. You guys, you're going to work hard on this? I am. I, I got a question about the image preparation. That's a new term and a new function for me. Right. We'll play with that when we start looking at um, using images, vector images, or non-vector images, I guess, for automation, and then going into the fills and the manual punches. So okay. don't worry about that too much. That that's how you clean up a bad graphic. And but, you know, on a bad graphic, like even this one, it wasn't really a bad graphic. It just was a bitmap and had too many colors in it, right? But most of the images, like if you want to do red work or you want to do a quilt design, most of the images you get, the outlines are too thick. You know, they're, they really have to be almost one pixel lines for the program to see it as a running line. You know, right now it sees this as an area, not as not as a, a line. Does it make sense? Like you wouldn't want to turn this into a satin stitch, but that's how the program would see a line this thick is, oh, it ought to be a satin stitch line. Um, but it's too narrow to really stitch properly on your embroidery machine. And, you know, that wouldn't be what you wanted. You would want more of a red work effect on this. So, okay, so once you get your images, no matter what you get, I don't care how good or bad they look or how good or bad you think they look, um, you know, play with that. And once you get your images, I can turn over, I believe, control to, I don't know if I can get to your screen, but if you send me your images in advance, um, you know, I'll open them up in the screen, right? And to give you an idea what you can do with those images, when you're over here, you can actually say file save as, okay, and, and it's going to let you save it as a JAN file. Now, I'm just going to leave leave that safe, right, and we'll close this, and I'll show you what happens when you do it that way. Okay, so there's the file, and, you know, when you go back to the art file, you know, whatever was in there is in there. Does that make sense? So if you save it, if you go from here, file, save as, whatever artwork, double check it. Just be safe and export it to a WMF, right? But whatever is here should still be there. Okay? 
even though you're saving it as a JAN file. So, but, you know, if you send those in ahead of the next webinar, which is going to be in a couple of weeks, in two weeks, actually, um, if you send those in ahead of time, then I'll open them up and I can turn, I believe, the mouse controller to you if you want to tell us, you know, where you had a problem. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can just kind of explain it to us and I'll, I'll point out and show you how to edit those, okay? Great. And I'm sorry. You said we send it as a WMF. Um, I would save it as a WMF just to be safe, right? They file export. Let me cancel this. File export. Okay. And just export as a WMF. Name it, and you'll see, you know, it should come up default WMF. If it doesn't, select that. Or you can save it as an illustrator. I can open illustrator files too. Um, and I believe you can import them back in. But either way, I would pick WMF and save it just to be safe, okay? Just to be safe. Because one of the beautiful things, especially for you, because you have a bazillion different embroidery programs, but one of the really nice things is if you're working on an image and you get it all done and you just don't have time to convert it, what you can do is new, um, may open up a hoop. You can take that image, insert an image. Let's go over to, you know, it shows up as bit, but let's go and let's look for our WMF images. Oh, look, there we go. Throw it in there. Do I have the image turned off? No, I don't. It's on. Let me look for something. Maybe it opened up in here. Okay, there's my WMF image, right? So even though I brought the WMF image, it didn't necessarily show up on my screen like I thought it was going to because it was, this one was actually made in the program. I can come in here, and there are certain things I can do with this. Remember I was showing you about, oh, the lines and the fills. I should be able to come in here and say, you know, I really don't think I want. I just want the line. I don't know that I want a fill. I'm trying to remember, here's the fill. Let's, you know, let's get rid of that fill color. See what's going on? It remembers the lines, even though it may fill them with something. Okay? Okay. And, you know, I can actually select, select multiple things if I hold, you know, the control key or the shift key. Let me see which one, shift key. So I can say, you know, let's uh, take that fill out. It's going to make a liar out of me today, but... And you see kind of what's going on. I guess it didn't. It did get that up, this one in here. I didn't want to do that, so I can always put it back in. So, you know, you see what's going on? You know, even though it filled it in with something, it kept everything I put in this. I actually made this design in the program, and it, it's really kind of neat because, you know, it's pretty easy to do. I use a grid and, and just made that fan shape. Um, you know, so you have a lot of options, even though it saw that as a weird thing and put it in the art thing, I could still come in and salvage it and say, oh, you know, um, let's make sure everything's selected and let's convert this. And, you know, I would have cleaned it up better so I didn't have these areas. And, and if I just had lines, it would simply fill them. Or if you want to get really fancy, you could have made these different colors. You could have got, done a lot of different things with that image that you worked on. So make sure you save WMF. Make sure you save um, your Illustrator file too, because I believe if you go into File Import, you can bring in. Unless it does that, 